Hey there, good evening, and welcome to another edition of An Uncomfortable Truth, the podcast that takes things that you thought you knew and really breaks it down for you. (coughs) Before we get started, I want to welcome you all once again for um, another episode, and also to let you all know that we operate in the realm of five. Like, comment, subscribe, notifications, and share. First one, like. Simplest metric to push the YouTube algorithm and help give more content. If you like it, if you don't like it, smash one of those buttons. Preferably the like one. Comment. Good, bad, or indifferent. If you have something that you need to say or that you want to say, say it in the comment section below. Remember, we cannot grow if we do not know. Subscribe. All right, we got you. And you want access to our content. That's the button that'll get you to it. Want to go deeper? Notify via the notification bell. Hitting that button will alert you to when we upload new content. And we have new content fairly regularly, at least two to three times a week. And as it gets closer to the summer, we may may up it. Who knows? But you won't know if you don't strike that button. And share. If you like it, Chances are somebody in your friend group will like it too. Why not give them the why not give them the love? Share it. They might like it. They may give it pass it on to some of their friends. They may like it. And again, it helps grow the channel. Those five options don't take much time at all. But help us to grow and make everyone's life just a little bit easier. And a little bit better. So consider it. And now, on to the topic. And the topic is... (sighs) The topic is... Women don't know what they want. And uh, <laughs> one of these days I'll get that right. Um, shout out to Just Pearly Things for bringing us this content. And the um the video we're going to be talking about is is feminism a disaster. Spoiler alert, I think it is. Or, to be more precise, today's feminism, feminism 2.0, is a disaster. And it's a disaster because people don't know when to stop. The original wave of feminism came about because women were upset that they were asked to do things but weren't acknowledged for doing those things. So men in power said, okay, we can see we haven't treated you fairly. Here you go. But that wasn't enough. Now was it? We are at a place in society where women enjoy far more than their male counterparts. They go to college more. They get degrees more. A lot of them in the bigger cities like New York, Atlanta, Los Angeles, Miami, um, those sort of places, 
Chicago, Cleveland. They're earning on par with men, if not earning more. Add on to that the, fem- the current wave of feminism. You don't need a man. That right there is the worst advice you can give anyone, male or female. You don't need a man. Oh, you don't. Okay. Okay. Let's do a hypothetical. Let us do a hypothetical. I'll get there in time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, new soundboard. Just learning it. You're going to hear more and more of it in the coming episodes, but it's there and it's going to be used. But let's do a hypothetical. Let's say you get a man and a woman. You plunk them on a desert island. No, not a desert island. It's just an island. You plunk them on an island. And you say, okay, here are some basic tools that you're going to need to survive. Have at it. And then we're going to sit back and watch them go. For the most part, and this is based upon what we see and what we know of the sexes, the man will figure out what he needs and get and get to work. The woman will figure out what she needs, but she won't get to work. Oh, she will if it cuts to, to, to a pain. But because of biological differences, the man will get it done sooner. The man is faster, bigger, stronger. He can do things that women can't. And so he'll get it done while the woman's still figuring it out. Figuring it out. Where do women come in? Okay, women come in if, let's say, you have a bunch of women. And you drop them into a social setting. And you have a bunch of men and drop them into a social setting. And you say, here are the tools that you need to survive. Have at it. And sit back and watch them go. The women will very quickly suss out the pecking order. They'll, 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 They'll figure it out. They'll slip into their roles in the in that matriarchy. And they'll go about their business. Men, on the other hand, they'll figure out what they got. They'll 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 suss out their roles, slip into the roles as dictated by the patriarchy, and they'll go about their business. The trick is, women are more socially aware than men. That's a fact. That's a given. That's not up for debate. Women are more socially aware. That means that in a in a social setting, women can figure things out faster than men. That women's intuition it's re- it's a real thing. Just like a man's gut is his real thing is a real thing. We have a video today that we're going to get to, and that video, once again, shout out to Just Pearly Things, once again, is is feminism a disaster? 
And this is going to tie neatly into the overarching theme of the Today Show, which is women don't know what they want. And on his face, that sounds stupid. That sounds really, really stupid. But, as you'll see, it's very true. Women don't know what they want. Okay, we got it queued up. Here we go. And now, on with the video. Okay, we're going to go past that and get and get right into the meat and potatoes of the topic. This looks to be no, 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 no. Okay. No, no, not there, not there. Let's see, let's go back a little bit. Okay. Shout out to the lady, the blonde, on this podcast. In the first few minutes of the podcast, she has broken down and driven home a major, major uncomfortable truth. Women, as a whole, don't know what they want because society has told them not to say it. I'll say that again. Women don't know what they want because society has told them not to say it. And this is because in the recesses of their brain, they don't want to. And all they're looking for is a reason to, to validate their feelings. I don't know what I want, but it doesn't matter. Because he knows, he should know what I want. And I then counter with, well, if you don't know what you want, how is he going to know? How is he going to know? If you don't know what you want, how is he supposed to know? You haven't told him because you don't know. So if you don't know and he screws up in trying to figure out what you want, is he really to blame? The feminine will say, yes, he is. 
because he should know this. I'm of, I'm of the world, I'm of the mindset of telling you, no, because you didn't know. So how, again, how is he going to know? So let's get back to it. I don't know what a slow walk is. What is a slow walk? I'm going to have to look into that. We'll, we'll revisit that a little bit later. Okay, we're going to stop this for a second, because now I really, really want to know, what is a slow walk? Okay. A slut walk is a feminist protest. According to Wikipedia, um, the goal is to walk towards the police station and speak to the police officers about victim blaming and to raise awareness as they're the frontline worker in the sex and sexual assault scenario. That's the thing. That's the thing. Okay, you walk towards the police station and speak to the police officers about victim blaming and to raise awareness as they're the frontline worker in the in sexual assault scenario. So you gotta walk up to a police station, go into the police station, speak to an officer or officers about victim blaming. And to raise awareness about victim blaming. Victim blaming is, well, for, no, no. Let's go back to the actual word. Slut walk is stupid. And it's stupid because you're trying to claim a negative connotation. They're trying to make slut walk acceptable because they want to make the word slut acceptable. Much like black people do with the N-word. And I'll say to them the same thing as I speak to black people. If you don't want them to use the word, if you don't want the word to be used, don't use it yourself. You don't like it when someone that's outside of your culture calls you the N word. Don't give them a reason to call. Don't re- give them a reason to use the word. You got tons and tons of records and videos and all that good stuff where people using the N word. Black people using the N word. Now, granted, the con- the usage is different, but the end result's the same. You are are glamorizing a word that was built to destroy. That's not either here nor there. 
Let's get back to it. I can explain it. If it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, chances are pretty darn good it is a duck. That's why you get so much pushback and so much hesitation from men in trying to talk to women. Because you don't know who's a feminist and who's not. You don't know who's going to take offense to something. You don't know how they're going to take offense to something. So the best way to do it is not to say anything. Keep it moving. Keep it real. Keep it moving. Uh, Let's go back. I feel like, I feel like, and the one problem I have, once again, with just pearly things, is there's no pushback. And when I say pushback, I'm talking in the way they throw that term around. I don't think they they recognize how often they use it. I feel like, 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 bring it to their attention. As Fresh and Fit do, shout out to Fresh and Fit. You say, I feel like, merch. So, I feel like, you what? You what? Just to bring to the attention, you're using that phrase a lot. And it's telling because it's telling how you feel. Or how you li- your worldviews, how you look at things. I feel like. There are other words that can be convey, convey the same thing, but aren't the same. I believe. Or be it, I think. Feelings are emotion based. Thinking is logic based. But go on with your Moroccan self. And I say she's Moroccan because she's on a, um, she's also on a King Richard's podcast that I saw early. I talked about, I think I talked about it a little bit earlier. If not, we'll go and do another show on that another time. But um, yeah, you go ahead. That's one of the few times she'll say something, and I totally agree with it. You want to do the same thing as a man. You want to sleep with men the way men sleep with women. Do you really want that? You say you want it, but do you really want it? Do you understand the things that go into it? The reasons why? Now, once again, I'll be the first to say, sleeping around is generally frowned upon. It's a no-no. It's not a crime, but it's bad morals. You can't get in trouble with the law for sleeping around, but you can't lose a partner. Then the way the, the way the um, courts and the law system set up, the law system says. Okay, now we're going to show you how wrong you were. Here's your punishment. (laughs) 
excuse me. Um, women don't really want it. Which brings one of the one of the best arguments I've heard in a long time. I forget the podcast it was on, but um, I think it might have been Fresh and Fit. Once again, shout out to Fresh and Fit, where um, a woman was saying, "Why can't we do what you do?" And one of the co-hosts was like, "Do you want her? Do you want to?" And if not, then why do you bring it up? And that goes back to something I said about just dealing with people in general. If you bring up something during a conversation, you bring it up because you believe in it to some extent. You believe in it. So when people, when you say, why can't women sleep around with a bunch of guys like I sleep around with a bunch of girls? It begs the question, do you want to? And to which you get, no, I don't get to. Well, then why did you bring it up? If you don't want it, don't speak about it. Don't put the thought into someone else's head. Because a guy is going to say, hmm, she's asking about it. Red flag, she might be doing it. Recreational use only. We'll smash it, (coughs) but it gets no deeper. And men do sleep around, but there's a biological reason for it. They do it because biologically, they are going to want to spread their seed to ensure paternity and to continue the bloodline. They want to ensure that their surname is carried on. That's just now. Back in the day, it was to ensure the survival of the species because the strongest male would mate with, um, I won't say the strongest female, but I'll say the best female of the brood. Females are genetically prepositioned, dispositioned to protect their egg so that they can get the best male that they can get. Men tend to spread their seed, which is why we have thousands and thousands of sperm and women only have 3,000 eggs. No, not thousands. We have millions of sperm. Millions. And we have millions of sperm because it take because out of those millions of sperm, one might get lucky, and that w- and the key word there is might, because more times than not, it's not. Let's get back to the video. They're not hiding their emotions. They don't have any. Hence the term post-nut clarity. 
up to that point, a man's sole focus is having sex with that woman. Plain and simple. Their total focus is betting the woman. And to achieve that outcome, they'll do darn well anything that they possibly can do to get that favorable outcome. So no, it has nothing to do with emotions or anything like that. And for you to say that, that's not a good look. With the pervasiveness of the internet and the reach of YouTube, And the explosion of man-centric topics and podcasts on YouTube. I'm sure you've heard it. And judging from your answer there, you chose to ignore it. This girl's an idiot. I don't feel like to be completely honest and open it word salad. You ha- you have a peer telling you what the score is. She's telling you, men can have sex with women with no attachment, no emotion, no nothing. But I feel like you don't believe it? No, you don't want to believe it. And that's because um, very, very many hosts and very many podcasts have driven home the fact that women are fed a lie. They're given life through a Disney lens. Which gets part of it right. The part that gets right is that the handsome prince, well, actually, no, no, they don't get that, even get that right. The handsome prince will save the damsel in distress. I'll save you. Okay, come save me. Man. Madness. But, once again, back to the video. She's talking in circles. She's talking in circles. Here's an uncomfortable truth. The dating marketplace doesn't care what you think. It 
it has its rules, it has its guidelines, it has its boundaries. And for maximum success, you are required to operate within those parameters. You can act any way you want. And that goes for anything. You can act any way you like. You can do what you want. You can say what you want. You can be who you want to be. All that good stuff. And as many a podcast has said, good on you for it. But you need to be aware that Actions breed consequences. And a consequence is a disfavorable outcome. So actions breed outcomes. For every action, there's an equal yet opposite reaction. You want to sleep around? Sleep around. You be labeled a hoe. It is what it is. Stay tuned for part two of the uncomfortable truth. And women don't know what they want. We're going to get even deeper into it. It ought to be very interesting. So stay tuned.